Welcome back to the Great Nutrition Business Podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach. We know that helping your clients become the best and healthiest versions of themselves isn't just about what they eat or coming to the gym a few hours a week. We as gym owners and coaches have to focus on a holistic approach, looking at support systems, stress management, sleep, mindset, lifestyle, and of course, exercise and nutrition. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Basics of Nutrition Coaching, CrossFit Preferred Nutrition Course. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to make one step at a time to becoming the best nutrition coach and building an awesome habit-based coaching program. So excited about today's podcast guest, Jason Fernandez. He has been in the CrossFit realm for a long time from seminar staff to a CrossFit affiliate owner, coach, and he also co-owns a mentoring program specifically for CrossFit gyms. I've had the opportunity to connect with Jason quite a few times over the past few months at CrossFit affiliate gatherings as we're both speaking at many of them and thought it'd be a fun conversation to talk about one of the plays that they do at best hour of their day called Bring a Friend Week. This has been something that we actually recently did in our gym and it was a huge success for us. So I hope you learn from this podcast episode. We will get to this episode right after this message. Did you know that HSN is hosting a live event in person in Nashville, Tennessee, July 13th to the 15th? That's right. We are hosting a live event for gym owners, managers, nutrition coaches, and aspiring nutrition coaches. If you are looking to increase confidence when growing a nutrition coaching program, or maybe expand into employee wellness partnerships, looking to level up your nutrition coaching program, we would love for you to join us in person. This live event is for any gym owner, coach, and aspiring nutrition coach. So you don't have to be an HSN mentoring client. I can guarantee you will walk away with actionable tips to help you level up your business and ideas to make a greater impact in your community. Here's the deal. We've all dedicated our lives to helping people and sometimes it can feel like we're on an island. Live events like this are so much fun to connect with other leaders in the industry and so that you leave inspired and ready to make a greater impact. I hope that we see you at the Gym Accelerator Summit in Nashville, Tennessee. Make sure you click the link in the show notes to lock in your spot today. Again, this event is going to be July 13th to the 15th. All right, let's get to this episode with Jason Fernandez of Best Hour of Your Day. Fern, welcome to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We, we see each other more frequently now with all the summits and stuff. <laughs> right. We've been traveling together to go to the CrossFit Affiliate Summits, which has been really fun to like hang out, connect talk to a bunch of gym owners. You've been talking about some really cool things. I actually just love listening to your presentations. They've changed every time, which has been fun for me because I'm like, okay, we're going to learn something new every time. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. And you know, one of the things, which is the reason actually why I asked you to come on the podcast is you talk a lot about this bring a friend week. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think we should, we should backtrack first before we dive into bring a friend week. You have, play many roles inside a CrossFit affiliate. You're a gym Mm -hmm. owner. You've been on seminar staff for a long time. You also mentor a lot of gyms. How did all of this come about? (laughs) Oh, I'll I'll give you the short, short, short version. Um, My story is not unique in how I found CrossFit. My wife introduced me to CrossFit. It was like 2007, maybe. Uh, We were both played collegiate athletics. We were looking for something else to do. Natural transition. I happened to walk into CrossFit Virginia Beach, which was then owned by Pat Sherwood. Okay. Um, And then another guy that I met there named Joe Alexander. Uh, Joe Alexander still still works um, for CrossFit and is the kind of head of the kind of training department uh, for seminar staff. And then Pat has moved on to many other things, uh, Lynchpin. But that's where I started with those guys. And so I started CrossFit, eventually like um, ended up with my affiliate very shortly thereafter. Um, and then actually met another guy, which you might know, Chris Russell, he owned, they own CrossFit Jacks. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yep. So Chris, Chris was geo batching at the time. So his family was still living in Jacksonville. They own their affiliate and he was living here in, uh, in Virginia beach. And he came into my affiliate and he coached at our affiliate for like a year or two, maybe and a half. Okay. And that, that kind of all started the seminar staff bug. Cause all three of those, uh, those guys were on seminar staff. Um, I was still in the Navy 2013, kind of started the internship process, made it on seminar staff in 2013. Uh, so I'm going on 10 years this year. Wow. Um, recently promoted to Flowmaster. So I get to run the the seminars, which is a really cool gig and very much an honor and a privilege. And then four years ago, my partner, one of my partners, Jason Ackerman and I, we were just chatting. He was he used to be he used to live on the East Coast. So he's from New York and then moved to Florida. So he was down in the Naples area for a while. So we found ourselves pretty regularly on seminars together uh, for like a four or five month stint. And, you know, in seminar staff, you spend a lot of time in the airports together. You spend a lot of time in the car together. And we're like, dude, we should just start a podcast. We're having these conversations. We should just start a podcast. So we just hit record, started doing a podcast, started just calling everybody that we knew in the space and just started stacking guests like, you know, as much as we could. And, and it kind of turned into a thing. And because we focused pretty narrowly on coaching and then that kind of spun over into affiliate ownership. And we started getting a ton of requests for people to help for people that wanted our help with their gyms at which point I kind of reached out back to an old mentor and friend of mine Marcus Gersey who was with uh Barbell Shrugged Barbell Business you know Barbells for Boobs Reebok like he's the most interesting man in CrossFit that nobody knows and <laughs> we kind of we kind of teamed up together and and started Affiliate U and then that has um you know, been quite the rocket ship and it's cool. So we got, we're working with anywhere between 250 to 300 gyms at any given time all over the world. Um, we have gyms in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, South America, um, all over. And so that's what we do now. So I have a, I have a, I guess a unique throughput through the community where I kind of help gym owners own a gym, train trainers and coach athletes. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, all, people, people out there, people tell me all the time, like you do a lot of things and I'm actually, so I actually just do one thing. I do, I do CrossFit, CrossFit, but I just do it. I just do it at all levels, which is not really the norm. So uh, I feel very fortunate in that respect. You have a lot of experience. You've worn a lot of different hats in the CrossFit space from coaching to teaching coaches to running an affiliate. So, you know, you have this 360 view of a lot of things that gym owners struggle with, which is pretty unique. And then affiliate you, you guys do the coach development as well as the business development. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you guys talk about, and I've actually seen quite a few gyms that have partnered with HSN do this thing, mm -hmm. bring a friend week. And I was like, okay, we've done bring a friend day. And if I'm honest, it hasn't worked out for our gym. Jay, my husband, I was like, let's just mm -hmm. go through the course that they have. Let me know what you think. And then let's see how it goes. And I'll share my experience at the end, but I want to take yeah. a deeper dive into bring a friend week. Like what is the big picture goal mm -hmm. of bring a friend week and why is it so successful? So I kind of stumbled upon this whole process maybe like six years ago. So I made it at CrossFit Rife and it was, uh, it was kind of a, my, my, cause my feel it's been open for, it'll be 14 years in October and like every gym I have all the same struggles that everybody else had not don't know what I'm doing at all. And then you get kind of okay. And then, um, you know, at, in affiliate you, we preach very heavily retention, but that doesn't mean that we don't understand lead generation. And so as an affiliate owner, that's kind of like your, that's kind of the dance is like, how do I balance lead generation with, with, with solid retention? And a lot of the lead generation tools in the space paid, gimmicky, all that other kind of stuff. I said, all right, well, how about we just create a process and a program or system, if you will, that has all the pieces that we need. It's got social proof. It's got an, it's got a good incentive. Um, you know, it gives a reason for people to come into the gym and, and we can essentially latch onto all the things that we know are effective. So I started running it years and years, years ago, and I still run it to this day. So I've, I've run, you know, 30 or 40 of them at this point and they still work. And that's the beauty of it. it. It leverages, you know, in air quotes, the community and the CrossFit, uh, in the CrossFit box and to allow people to bring in warm leads with a high conversion rate 
with almost zero cost to the affiliate outside of like a little bit of time. And so when we started establishing affiliate you, people come to us, they're like, I need leads. I need leads. I need leads, which a is not always the case, but yes, people do need leads. So how do we get, you know, a consistent flow and throughput of leads that won't be detrimental to the affiliate that create long-term relationships and that are kind of warm in nature, thus bring a friend week. So, um, I don't know how far you want me to go down the rabbit hole, but that's really what it is for. It's just like, hey, gyms have good networks. How do we leverage those networks to help them grow the facilities? And we've seen, I mean, we've seen some crazy numbers over the past few years for gyms and affiliate you where like we've had gyms that have had 60 people walk through the door that week. Now you're not going to convert all of those, but however, this is always my point. If I told you that I could, we could get 60 people to walk in your door or even 30 for that matter, and it would cost you $0. Nobody's turning that deal down. It's not happening. I said, and you right. and you'll it'll be fairly easy to convert 15 to 25% of them. Sign me up all day long. And it works every single time. So why bring a friend week versus bring a friend day? So I played around with this for years before I kind of figured out why. So many gyms will run bring a friend day. And mm -hmm. the issue with bring a friend day is the frequency is way too high. So let's just say you're running, bring a friend day. I don't know, even if you were running it once a week or excuse me, once a month, you would have to, you would never get out of the promotion cycle from that. And people would get exhausted, right? From a, from a sales cycle, they would just be like, all right, dude, enough with the bring a friend day thing, much less if you're doing it weekly. So it creates this scenario in which the buyer has really no incentive to use it because it, I'll just get it next week. And then I'll just get it the week after that. And then I'll just get it the week after that. So they never actually use it. And I always ask people, how many people, how many refers do you get a month? And short answer is typically zero. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well then it's not working, you know? Um, and now if we kind of go way back in the time machine to, you know, the Greg Glassman days and, you know, it's like, Hey, your, your members are your biggest advocates. They are, they still need a mechanism with which to bring their friends in like a, a logical reason to do that. So from, from the buyer's end, that's why the day doesn't work. Um, from a, from the seller's position, meaning the box owner, it doesn't work because number one, I can fake anything for a day, which means I can just put my best foot forward, even though that may not be how I actually run the gym. It also is not a long enough time for me to create any sort of relationship or any sort of habit building by the potential new client when they come in. So that's why a week works. It gives them the opportunity to test a number of different classes, a number of different coaches, meet a, a, a much larger volume of people where that connection will start to set in and they'll be more likely to convert. Um, so that's that's the reason why it works on the gym owner's end. It also, when you start to spread it out, because we typically recommend you do about three of these a year, no less than three typically. Now I can create FOMO around the event. So now it's a, now I can lead up to it. I can give it, I can give it the proper marketing to get the throughput that I would like in order to get the conversion rate that I would like leveraging my clients who I already love and they love me or you, if you're listening to this. So that's the reason it's far more effective. And then we can get into like how you design uh, a referral offer as we get through. But the, the big takeaway there is like, in order to constitute a referral program, I need the mechanism for delivery and I need the offer together. If you don't have both of those, then there is no program. I either just have an offer or I just have like a not even a program. I just have like a day that we do this and you could do that absent of an offer, which would be silly. So you mentioned marketing and leading up to it. How far in advance should people be planning a bring a friend week? Yeah, we typically tell people four to six weeks. And this kind of okay. depends on the gym owner. Um, you don't want to get too far out in front because then it then people become it just it'll fall on deaf ears. So four, six weeks on the long end, typically four weeks is more than enough. Um, because you can bludgeon people for about four weeks with that, with that idea, and they won't get too tired of it. Six weeks, they might get a little tired of it. So it kind of depends on the gym owners. Like, what's their threshold for communication? If they're if they like it to be a little bit more sparse, do six weeks. If you're cool with going hot and heavy four weeks and um and promote it everywhere as we tell everybody there, there's no there's no too much promoting of something like this 
we actually got little, I got this idea from our church, but little invite cards with the class times on the back. Uh, so like business cards that we put a QR, scan, QR code. code scanner thing on the front, like scan and enter your info. And then the back was the schedule. And even as people came in the first day, I gave them a card if they didn't have a card because I wanted them to have the schedule like easily available. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I took away from Jason, my husband going through the course was like, hey, we got to get these people in multiple times. And I don't know if I would have really like thought out the logistics of, yeah, right. you mentioned the habit, like there is an intentional effort that has to come into the process of nurturing these people to get a good conversion rate. Yeah, it's um, it's just like everything else. I mean, it, it's it's no different than obviously a huge component of your audience is nutrition based, right? It's 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 exactly the same protocol, which is like habits build everything. So if I can yeah. get them in a habit of coming into the gym, the likelihood of them wanting to come back or wanting to join the gym after that, because of either the relationship that they've made, a connection they had with a coach, a great experience they had in a training session, they're going to take advantage of that. So we want them to come in because now I can find out more about them. I mm-hmm. can get a little bit deeper into like what what, is, what it is that they're looking for, how I can help them, all that kind of stuff. Maybe find, you know, find out some personal details and I can connect them with somebody else in the community. It's really difficult to do that in one session. But if they were there four times that week, because at the end of every class, I ask them, I say, hey, Nicole, are you coming back tomorrow? You're like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, how about, how about the 5 p.m.? They're like, all right, see you tomorrow. Like, that's another opportunity for me to kind of connect um, and then show what we really should be doing, which is the accountability piece. Like, you know, if I don't ask you if you're coming back tomorrow, it kind of subconsciously gives the, you know, the the feeling that I don't really care. Yeah. I think one of the things that we leaned into really hard with this effort was my, the plan was Jason or I would be at the gym just to have someone there to like greet people, chat between classes. He ended up getting hurt. So I was there for all the classes. It was like reopening the gym again. It was great. I saw a lot of people. It was fun. Oh, very tired at the end of that week. But one of the things that we leveraged was those, those intentional conversations, but then we used push press grow to like mm-hmm. SMS people. So right. like you said, you were coming on Thursday on Wednesday, I'm saying, Hey, Fern, so excited to see you still coming at 530 tomorrow. Now, you know that it's not an automation, like someone remembered, it's an extra level of accountability and support. And my intention was to do that every single day with every single person so that there was some personal touch point. And it was all just kept through, um, through push press go. That's how, how we ended up having a really good conversion rate. I want to go back to something you've mentioned it twice, Mm -hmm. a compelling offer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So the, I I actually believe I learned this from Marcus, like, I don't know how long ago when he was at, when he was with Barbell Shrug. But one of the things we've all made a mistake with when creating a referral is incentivizing the wrong party. So typically pick one, doesn't matter which one, either the referrer or the furry, we would only typically incentivize one of them in that scenario. And if you only incentivize your members, they're already purchasing the product. They don't really care. And if I only incentivize the referee or their friend, this one's counterintuitive. Then my then my current members are like, well, what do I get out of it? Even though they don't yeah. care, right? So you have to understand the psychology. <laughs> like it's one of those things. It's one of those things that like it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. So the key to making a compelling offer is you have to incentivize both parties because the psychology of giving is something that's really important. So they're more inclined to take advantage of giving their friend a gift than they are to take advantage of getting some sort of gift from the gym owner. Now, now I'm going to do both because that's really what I'm looking for. So if I can cover all aspects of that in one offer and design it such that I won't lose on the transaction, well, then it's a win-win. And that's typically why we recommend the kind of the the format that we do with the referrals, which is about 40%. It's mathematically impossible for you to lose on that deal. Large enough incentive for them to take notice. Um, But the giving is a really huge component of that, right? When they want to give their friend a gift, now it's not actually, think of it like this, it's not actually me giving the referral. It's the member giving the referral. Like Mm -hmm. I'm bringing you in and because you're friends with me, 
Mm-hmm. So the social proof now you're going to get this benefit. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge aspect of why that referral works so well. And I don't know what the number is on this, but thousands of referrals over the last two years with the gyms that we have run this with like thousands, like it's so many and it converts so well. Um, and it's simple, like a little human psychology, social relationships, and you're there. Right. It works really, really, really well. And it's free. That's the that's the big thing for the gym owner. It is free. If you were to bring in on a low volume, right? 15 every time you do this. And what we've seen statistically is that if the longer you do this, 15 would be low consistently. That's 45 warm leads every year. If you were to convert, call it 20% of those, right? A fifth of that. You're talking about almost 10 people. At which point, that's 10 conversions that cost you nothing. Depending on what your average client value is, you're talking about a probably an increase of $20,000 a year, roughly, in revenue Huge. from those 10 people. Like, it's not, a, it's not a little bit of money. Yeah. You know, so it's, um, and it's the long game because people are like, well, what if they don't join? I'm like, invite them to the next one. I've had people come to bring a friend week for two and a half years before they join. Do you have people... So we've got this compelling offer, 40%, let's say, theoretically. Mm -hmm. For our gym, it was 60 bucks off. So 60 bucks off the new member, 60 bucks off um, for the next month for the Mm -hmm. current member. Do you recommend having a point and like, okay, you came to bring a friend week, you got to sign up by this date to get the 60% off on both sides? You can or the sixty dollars no, off on both sides. Yeah, I mean, nothing is nothing is hard and fast, right? So some of this depends, I think, a little bit on the gym owner, like what's their threshold for using this this concept of scarcity? Because if if you're not comfortable with that idea, it comes off a little sleazy, right? So I think yes, it does help. You just have to be careful with it. Like in the sales world, like scarcity is one of it's like a it's a double edged sword, right? Like you definitely cut yourself with it because it can turn people off. Um, I do think where it can be more beneficial is if let's just say you run this three times a year. And if you are going to, in one of those sessions, like up the offer, or let's just say that yours was 60 and once a year, you're like, screw it. We're going to do a hundred. That one for sure. I would put uh kind of like a timetable on be like, Hey, you need to do it by this day or it goes back to the normal referral of $60. So I think there's multiple variables involved there. And just make sure that when you do it, you think the whole thing through and you make sure that you communicate it. You remind them, you know, you have that kind of closing cycle to get them to to set everything up to do that. So we've seen people do it both ways and it can be effective both ways. It, that The variable there is kind of like the gym owner or whoever is leading the sale. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We started our sale. So it started on a Saturday, ended on a Saturday. I started mm-hmm. talking to people about signing up on Thursday. Yeah. Like I wanted, so like by Friday, we had already had people converted over, signed right. up. Saturday, we had more. And then by the early the next week, we finished off with, we ended up with a 60% conversion rate. Oh, Which is yes, great. The yeah. amount of people were less, but we got quite a bit of them, which was, right. I would say, the best new member influx we've ever had in a week time span, which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's um, a layup. Yeah. It's, it was perfect um, for gyms who have never done any type of discount or referral offer. Does the referral offer go away after bring a friend week or do you consider or recommend like, Hey, consider the idea of keeping the referral offer all year round. I, I have it. We recommend they keep it all year round because you never know when somebody's going to take advantage of it. So every, every box owner I've ever met has kind of these one or two, you know, hardcore ambassadors of their gym. And I'm not going to de-incentivize those people because if they're going to bring me three people during bring a friend week, and then every other month, they're going to bring me another person. I'm going to take that deal every day of the week and twice on Sunday because I designed it so that it is mathematically beneficial to me, right? At no point could it be detrimental. And I'm going to continue to give that member the benefit of the referral. So let's just say that you're membership was 180 bucks a month or whatever your billing cycle would be. Every time they would refer one of these people, they're bringing their, you know, depending on what it is for, for us, it would be about 80 bucks. On average, they'd be bringing their membership costs down 
call it seven to eight dollars each time on average they would do that as far as like what they would be spending to the gym monthly right so if it was 180 then it's going to be 173 they refer another person then it's going to be you know 166 so it's in their benefit to do so but it's not crushing the business because they're bringing me new business every time they do this so i'm net positive on every single one of these transactions and I'm building those over time. That's why it works. So, and I think you should offer that in every sales conversation you have is that, yes, we have a referral. We've had people refer. I had this happen one time. I had a guy come in. We told him about the referral. The next week, his friend, he brought a friend in. We told that guy about the referral. He brought a friend in the next week. We told that guy, that guy brought in a friend in the next week. So off of one guy, we converted four total wow. in a matter in a matter of three and a half weeks. So- it's, it's not, yeah, you should leave it on the table all the time. The people that are going to take advantage of it are going to take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, but is, but really just like make sure that the math works. So you could definitely design a referral offer that did not work. That would be detrimental to the business. And that's not what we're recommending. Um, so it's, you just got to put a little bit of thought onto it, but it's not, not, we're not building rockets here, you know? One last question about bringing frame week and then we're going to okay. move over because okay. if people are like, okay, this sounds really, really interesting. You guys have a free course that people can mm -hmm. go to. We'll click the link in yep. the show notes. Um, we'll put the link in the show notes so you can click it, go through that course. Super helpful. Programming is another piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. with this program. Can you talk a little bit about programming? Yeah. Some people are, this is going to rub, not rub people, make people a little uneasy. The, um, the, the, point of that week is to connect with people. So we do recommend that you make a change to your programming. Now, what that change looks like, it depends on what you're currently doing, but the workouts should be fun. They should be simple. They do not have to be easy, but you're going to want to avoid complex movements, right? No handstand walking, you know, like ring muscle ups, avoid barbell snatching and you'll be fine. Everybody who's just like, we can't avoid that. I'm like, for one week, you'll be just fine. I promise you will not lose any fitness. Um, but what I will tell you is if you put those things in, I couldn't tell you what the impact would be, but it will have a negative impact on your conversion because people will come in, they will get introduced to those things having never done them before. And the thought that will enter their mind is I cannot do this. And those are not the thoughts that we're trying to introduce during bring a friend week. The thoughts I want to introduce are, oh, I can do this. I yep. like these people. That lady's just like me. I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. We all know that there's going to be plenty of failure in their future in CrossFit. They're going to have <laughs> tons and tons of hard days. Not that week. Not that week. And again, it doesn't mean that the workouts have to be easy. You can make very simple, very hard workouts. And that's typically what we recommend because we don't want to overload the coach, right? Because people, you know, people complain all the time, like, well, my coaches can't, they can't do all of this. And I'm like, well, you know what they can teach? They can teach uh, an assault bike and a kettlebell workout. They can teach a deadlift and a run. They can teach a dumbbell snatch and a uh, box step up in a row workout. But none of those are, are are complex in nature. All can be dialed up and programmed appropriately to be very difficult. And difficult mm -hmm. has a sliding scale, right? Depending on the person we're talking about. So yeah, we do recommend that you tailor it for new people. Asterisk, you don't have to make it easy that because that'll turn off your your current members. They can push themselves harder too. <laughs> right. Go like, faster. Go, right. go heavier or go faster. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Last question. I know I said that was the previous one, but real last question. Okay. The best conversion rate. So what do people that are the most successful with Bring a Friend Week, what are they doing differently? A lot of what they're doing is what you outlined before, which is connecting during the week. If you can close during the week, close during the week, but make the connections during the week. So the people that convert the vest are not necessarily waiting until it's over, which you can still convert pretty well then. But the people that convert the best are connecting and closing during the week because you will probably be able to identify those people as you work as you work through the week and you're talking to them and you're asking them questions and then um, reaching out to them. So, you know, grand total of about, you know, if you're collecting the information and you're following up with those people, I don't know, an hour a day would be pretty heavy. Like that would be a lot um, of time to, so to uh, contribute to like just the follow-ups. You know, if you had, if you had a heavy week and you had eight people come in every single day, that means you have to follow with eight people. Like how, how much time are we talking about? 10 minutes total to send a couple texts out. Like it's not that much time, but that will drastically increase your conversion rate. And then, you know, play the long game too. 
send them a postcard that says thank you. Put them in a long-term nurture email campaign so that they're you keep them in the ecosystem. Um, you know, because it's not weird for people to get 30 people to come in during that point. Which one, if you did this three times a week, that's 90 people. It's 90 new warm leads in your ecosystem that I'll convert when I convert them. We like to say like a no is not a no forever. Okay. So if, if you waited one quarter to convert those, you know, three of them, is that okay? Sure. It didn't cost you anything. I like the idea of the postcard and yes, connecting with people. Absolutely. Like I would say if you're an owner, plan to be there, you know, even if you're not coaching, like connect with That's people. what we tell people. I'm like, that's your job that week is to be what yeah. we call the gym mayor. Like if you can yeah. pull yourself off of the floor, but just be there connecting with people, hop into the classes. Um, yep. well, that's your job that week. Yeah. I love it. Okay. We're going to shift gears. We talked a lot about bring a friend week. Again, if you want more information about this, go to the link in the show notes, grab the free course. Um, let's talk big picture with mm -hmm. gyms. You guys specifically only work with CrossFit gyms. Correct. What is the biggest pain point you are seeing right now with CrossFit gyms to that are it's holding them back to take their business to the next level? Um, what I would say is like most people are like, you know, they're going to say retention or sales or lead conversion. I would I would put this all is just a, a general lack of understanding of how the affiliate works, oddly enough. Like it's not just one thing. Um, you've seen some of the talks that I've given. A lot of the talks that I give at the summits are are based on some of the CrossFit models, the theoretical high career for the development of an athlete, the sickness, wellness, fitness continuum, um, understanding what are the vitals within the business and then what makes the business tick, at which point you would start to fill the gaps yourself. So a lot of people are like, oh, they need more leads. You might need more leads. Um, or they're like, you need better retention. Very likely need better retention. But that's that's like saying my elbow hurts, right? Your elbow is probably the the source of pain, but it's generally speaking in training in in most scenarios like that's not the cause of your that's not the cause of your pain. Your cause of your pain is a tight bicep or a tight forearm. So zooming out just a little bit and trying to give people the education to know and understand that nothing within the affiliate exists independently of anything else. That's really where the big hangup is because there, there's no shortage of tools out there out in the, in the space. Like there's, there's tools galore, there's spreadsheets, there's templates, you name it. It's, it, it, there's nothing new out there, but if you don't know how to use the tool or you don't know what the tool's purpose is, or you don't know how to leverage that tool with another tool, that's where it becomes really challenging because we've all been there where I, I, I get a tool and I go use it and, and I get good at that, but I, but I, it's not actually changing anything. I'm still struggling in some sense. So I kind of alluded to it earlier, which is like learning to do this dance between how our retention and lead generation, how do those things play together? And that's what we do is really try to approach this. It sounds a little bit woo woo, but like we're very systematic in what we do, right? So I don't want to downplay what we do. Like we have numbers galore and systems and templates and all those other things. But the education piece is really what we try to leverage, which is like creating this holistic approach where you understand it's not just your leads. It's not just that you don't have systems. It's not just that you have bad retention. It's that you don't understand what those things typically mean and how do we start to grasp them and then implement systems and tools and strategies that would help me leverage those things. So an example would be, how would planning out my yearly calendar have any overlap? in sales and increased conversion, right? Like most people wouldn't see those things being connected at all, right? Like your events and your workshops and your competitions and your uh, retail calendar, like what does that have to do with sales? Well, if you understand how sales work, going back to creating a compelling offer, it has a tremendous amount of overlap. So if I know that in the next 45 to 60 days, I have a nutrition workshop, we're going to roll out, um, you know, tank tops for the summer and we're, you know, going to do an in-house clinic. Well, the 45, 60 days rolling out to those, that might be stacked inside of my sales incentive for that cycle until those are over. So when people are coming in, how do I value stack to give them overwhelming value? Well, I would need to know what's coming up on the calendar. So be like, hey, by the way, you're, it's going to be no cost to the nutrition workshop, which is typically, you know, whatever, 50 to 500 bucks, whatever it's going to be. 
Um, and we're going to give you um, a steep discount on your tank top when you come in and you, no cost to you to come to the social. Okay. People are like, yeah, that sounds fantastic. In, including everything else that we do. So these are the things that we try to teach people. You know, it's like training, you know, you can't just train gymnastics all day. You can't just train weightlifting all day. I have to understand how those overlap and how to mesh them together if I want to be as fit as I possibly can. So that's really what I see is there's just a there's a disconnect between the different aspects of the business and how they all impact each other. Um, and then once we understand that, then it becomes easier to create systems because now here's, and this is what I what I've learned about systems. Everybody understands the concept of systems vast majority of people will not implement them unless they know why they're implementing them and they know what the connection is from one to the other. And they know that, oh, if I don't do my calendar, that's going to impact sales because I'm not going to be able to have to create these kind of compelling offers based on the things that we have coming up. Now they're more likely to implement the system and do it and make sure that it happens every single time because they understand like, oh, by not doing this one thing, there are significant downstream effects now of not doing those things. Then they're more likely to take action because they're like, they understand it now instead of just being like, oh, you have to have a calendar. I'm like, okay, but then well, like, what's it for? You know? Yeah. I think so many times gym owners get distracted by bright and shiny objects that are like, oh, this is going to change my business and turn it around. And it's like, no, actually a solid foundation is what you need before you go do all of the other things. Even when it comes to nutrition, mm -hmm. if you're a gym owner and you're coaching all of the classes and cleaning the bathrooms and doing the leads and like wearing every single hat, it is not the appropriate time for you to add a nutrition coaching program. You need to have a coach. That's doing the coaching in your classes. If you still love coaching CrossFit, great, coach a couple classes, but you can't be wearing all the hats and then want to add a nutrition hat on top. You're not going to successfully fulfill it. And then it's going to be a waste of your time and it probably isn't going to be a good quality service. So, you know, I, th I think so many times what I've seen the benefit from a mentor is let's just take away all the bright and shiny objects, figure out the one thing that we're going to do successfully and then add the next thing to the plate. And I, you're right about this dance with retention and sales. And we know that nutrition, we know that an accountability partner will increase retention of clients because they're seeing results faster and you're able to connect with them better because there's the intentional time that you're meeting with them on a regular basis. If we were to talk about nutrition, and this is going to be interesting because you mm -hmm. work with a lot of different gym owners than we work, but we do have a lot of overlying clients, mm -hmm. but I was recently reading a survey that said, 65% of gyms run nutrition programs, yet it's only 5% on average of their revenue. So That's not shocking if, to me at all. So you're bringing in $20,000 a month right. for your gym and you're bringing in $1,000 a month from nutrition. What would you say uh, to a gym that maybe is in that position I am sorry, but you're not running a nutrition coaching program. Like that 65%, you're not running a nutrition coaching program if you're bringing in $1,000 because that might be one nutrition challenge or two nutrition right. challenges that divides out per month. That's not an ongoing professional program where you're supporting your clients with nutrition. Yeah. It, so I think it goes back to you You said it, but I don't, I don't want to glance over it. So fulfillment. Fulfillment is the name of the game. We are all in a service-based business. And for whatever reason, the vast majority of CrossFit boxes overlook fulfillment of their group offering, meaning like it can and should be better than it is. The classes should be tighter. The programming should be more dialed in. The coaching should be of a higher caliber. The connections should be happening at a, high, at a higher frequency. Um, that's the name of the game. It's your number one retention tool. If, if it's like going to a restaurant, if the food's not good, I don't care how good the service staff is, like nobody's coming back to that restaurant. And it's the same in the gym. And the, I've, I've, I've said this before at, at different summits. It's it's a slippery slope because CrossFit's so effective, it works. And it tricks us into thinking that like we're good at this thing of coaching. When the reality is, is like probably not that good. It's just that CrossFit is really effective. So we have to revisit that and say, how could my core offering be fulfilled better so that people are so stoked about it and they have such a good time that they can't wait to come back tomorrow. And then you do that. 
for probably a longer period of time than you think you need to. And then you can earn the right to do another thing. You know, and that's and that's where I've learned this so many ways, the hard, so many times the hard way. It could always be better. And you're better off in more instances than not. And allocating that 15 to 20% of your time back onto the core offering, then you are spending it on something else. That 15 to 20% of additional time on the thing will probably return 20 to 30 times more than going to spend that 15 to 20% of time on a new thing. That will typically long-term, if we were to map that out and give you as many metrics as possible, have a negative return as far as like revenue and time spent. Do that. Revisit the core thing and do it over and over and over again until you're so good at it, you're bored. You're like, oh, now you can go do something else. And then you will have all the time, energy, and resources to go do that next thing just as well. And I think the biggest thing with nutrition specifically is how much time does it take to build a program from scratch? I mean, honestly, that's why our mentoring program exists, right? Like I, we don't create our own programming at our gym, right? right? We use programming right. because how much time would it take us to create the programming, all the science behind it to then create the class plans and all of right. the logistics, like how much time would that take? Or we can pay now CrossFit gives it away for free for affiliates, but why would we spend all of that time reinventing this wheel? Same thing with nutrition. Like right. you could, it would take years to build a solid professional nutrition coaching program from scratch to do it well and to make well, it I was going to say, I was going to say two years, maybe on at, the short end. At absolute minimum. And then you have to figure out a way to train the people that are going to fulfill it because you're right. not going to fulfill it. Right. You know? So it's just this whole logistical, I was Last week, well, actually, we're recording the podcast on in the last week of May. This week's podcast is talking about a gym owner who's like, Yeah, we tried to do it on our own. And then we realized it did not make sense. And now it's they've so scaled, hard. they've expanded into employee wellness and all of these things. Where do you see nutrition on the priority list within a CrossFit affiliate? This is this is a weird one, right? Because it's like it's it's the base of the pyramid. Right. If we're talking about the theoretical hierarchy for development of an athlete if, from a CrossFit textbook, right? Nutrition yep. is how I build the best version of myself. So it's absolutely in there. That idea needs to be married practically with the idea that I am running a brick and mortar business whose core centric offering is group training. So they have a ton of overlap, but it's not actually what I do. I, I do have the ability to pair them well together in many instances, but more often than not, it's not an if, it's a when question. Yeah. When do you have the appropriate amount of time, energy, and resources to devote to it? And I tell everybody this, I'm like, if you're standing up a nutrition program because your core offering is not delivering what it what you want it to, then that is the mm -hmm. wrong reason to be standing up a nutrition program. You're going to, you're going to end up having really shitty versions of both. Sorry. I don't mean to curse, but yeah, th that's, and that's why I'm like, cool. If your core offering is not delivering the way that it should be, don't start a nutrition program. I would argue you should spend your additional time figuring out like, how can I connect with my members more? Should I start tracking weekly attendance? How do I start tracking uh, weekly PRs and reaching out to people and birthdays and anniversaries and all these other things like, and actually connecting, spend your time there so that you can decrease your churn. Because then growing gets really easy at that point. Easy is relative, right? It's easier to grow at a higher rate if my if my retention is maxed out. And you max out retention by running great classes and in connecting with people on a personal level. And then you can then you it's easy to stack kind of like what we suggest, which is like net three. That's sustainable growth for most people until they have a team and then you can grow much faster than that. But for the for the single you know, one person band gym owner net three would, would get you to the end state. You grow 36 people, you know, for the, for three years, year on year, you know, you're probably over 150 clients. And in most people you're crushing at that, at that point. And there are easy ways to intentionally integrate nutrition into your classes right? by making that part of the programming, right? Hey, today we're talking about this. Hey, what's your favorite recipe? Sharing recipes in your workout tracking. There's a way 
to get your membership associating nutrition help with you. And no matter what stage you're in, in your business, I think that's a really smart strategy to do. Maybe you're not ready to deliver a one-on-one coaching program. Okay, no problem. At least start talking about it so people can associate nutrition help with your brand. And then when you do launch something, offer it, more people will be like, man, well, I've already been listening to Fern tell me about these things. Now he can help me with these things one-on-one. So no matter what stage you're in, intentionally talk about nutrition in classes and in your content. Well, you bring up a good point there, which is the education piece. Education is is free, meaning you could write one article a month and have two blog posts, nothing crazy, that you could roll out. Because um, I don't know what you see, Nicole, but I be, what I see a lot of times is the gym owners producing no content whatsoever, having zero <laughs> conversation about nutrition, and then they're going to spin up a nutrition program and try to charge $500 for it. There's so many things wrong with that. It, it's, it's, and I, and it's not, I don't want to throw rocks at people, but like the, it's the lack of understanding of like why that is going, not going to be successful. You have provided no value. You have not placed yourself at all as an expert in said topic to then go charge a premium dollar price for a service that you have never delivered before. It is not a winning recipe. Some people have made it work. That does not mean it is a good, it is a good idea. Um, and I think it's just like playing the long game here. Make yeah. sure that like in your gym, that is a thing that people talk about for a long time. People will start to recognize you as an expert in that field. And then when you do have the opportunity or you decide you want to, it will be significantly easier for you to sell it. A hundred percent. That's one of the reasons why the marketing part of our training goes at the very beginning. Cause we give you the content. It's right. like, here you go. Right. You need to start talking about it regularly so that when you launch, you have a wait list of people that are ready to get started with your business. This, this is, <laughs> this is, uh, this goes a lot, kind of go back to bring a friend week. Um, things out of order or out of place are weird and people notice when they're weird, right? So if you're not educating people on nutrition, all of a sudden you're like nutrition program, that is weird. It is out of place. It's completely out of left field. It's same thing with the, um, with kind of the referral offer, the referral offer absent of a reason to use the offer is also weird. If I was just running around the gym yelling, we have a referral, like every time I somebody, you know, we have a referral, it's weird. It's out of place. It doesn't make any sense. However, if I'm doing education topics on nutrition, and then I have a workshop well-placed, if I'm doing bring a friend week three times a year. And then I tell people there is an incentive for you to bring your friends in the refer now me talking about the referral is not, it's, I call it the mayonnaise effect, right? If I just walk, it was a, saw a guy walking down the street and he was just eating out of a jar of mayonnaise. I'm like, that's super weird questions. However, if I see a guy eating a sandwich that happens to have mayonnaise on it, like that's not weird at all. I would just glance right by that. Right. So how you pair them together and how you think about having these conversations matters for sure, because you may not know it, but like, if you just throw some stuff out of left field, like it's going, it's not going to be received. Well, people, they'll be skeptical about it. And that's the last thing you want in your gym is for them to be skeptical about you as a professional. Love that. A hundred percent agree with you. Holy cow. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Any final thoughts? And then I also want people to know how they can find you and the podcast yeah. you talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to check out best hour of their day, we're on YouTube or on Instagram. I think we're approaching 700 podcasts. There's a ton of uh, free content out there. You know, that's really the name of the game. We work with across affiliates all over the world. Uh, we have some really exciting stuff coming out here in the coming months, um, growing the team. So YouTube best hour of their day, uh, Instagram best hour of their day. Um, if you want to reach out to us, it's just support at besthouroftheirday.com. We'll reach out to you. The Bring a Friend Week mini course, it's free. It's for you guys. It is done for you. It is, you know, full, you know, frequently asked questions, templates for everything, general outline. I think that's been downloaded well over a thousand times at this point, and we've rarely ever get questions on it, but I get emails multiple times a week saying like, dude, this is amazing. Thank you so much. So check it out. It's free. It's for you guys. Uh, I hope it helps. Awesome. Thank you so much for all that you do. Excited to continue to travel uh, at more CrossFit affiliate events. If you are a CrossFit affiliate owner, make sure that you reach out to your rep and go to those in-person events. There's something so yes. powerful about connecting with people in person. There's It's a super fun um, experience. They're free. I know you guys are planning to host some events. We have our mm-hmm. live event, um, Gym Accelerator Summit in Nashville, Tennessee in July. 
uh, hopefully we get to see um, some more familiar faces there. But yeah. we will um, see each other in one of the affiliates soon. Thanks so much yep, for all I'll that see. you do. Yeah. And again, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Fern. Bring Your Friend Week was something really fun that we did at CrossFit HSN, and I plan to do it again. Here are a few tips that I would recommend that you do if you plan to run this. Number one, make sure that you have an extra person on the floor. If you're an owner or manager, please spend time in your gym extra that week. I was at almost every single class, greeting people, finding out a little bit more about them so that we could follow up with them with some of that personal information so that they didn't feel like it was automated messages. We used Push Press Grow throughout the entire campaign, created a form in there, people registered, there was an automated email that had the class schedule. We also followed up with every single person prior to Bring a Friend Week starting so that we could find out when they were planning to come. Remember, you don't want someone to just come one time during the week. You want them to come multiple times so that they can see the culture, get connected, and try a few different classes. We had a lot of fun with this program. I was actually surprised at how many people joined that had done CrossFit in the past, but just had taken some time off. Um, we had one member who ended up having three people join in his family. So he basically got a free membership at our gym, which is, which is awesome. Hope you get um, that access to that free course, download it, go through it and plan to run a bring a friend week and just see how it goes for you and your community. If you have the fitness piece dialed in in your gym, the group class piece is running smoothly and you are ready to add the next piece of the puzzle, nutrition, to your business. If you're ready to not reinvent the wheel, HSN Mentoring has a turnkey solution for you. From business systems to marketing support to the nutrition coach certification to an app to manage your clients everything you need, and most importantly, the mentoring and handholding so that you feel confident as a gym owner and a nutrition coach when delivering a professional habit-based coaching program. That is exactly what we do at HSN Mentoring. I would love the opportunity opportunity to connect with you. The first step to get started with HSN Mentoring is actually to book a free call with me. Gym owners are required to book free calls, but you are welcome to have anyone who might be interested in becoming a nutrition coach join that free call with you. You can click the link in the show notes to book a free call today so that we can learn more about your business and see if HSN is the right fit for you. Once we decide it is a right fit, then you sign up online, you immediately get access to the training and it takes about 30 hours. You can get up and running in about five to six weeks and launch your nutrition coaching program. Many gyms launch with a challenge with the goal of converting at least 50% of those people to ongoing nutrition coaching, and then also launching an individual coaching program at the same time. If you want to save time and not reinvent the wheel when building a nutrition coaching program, I'd love to help you click the link in the show notes and we can book a free call today. Hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review, and we'll see you back here next week.